Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Lots of interesting hemp news. We've got Justin James Bridges standing by in the wings. Howdy, Justin. How y'all doing? He'll be playing a song in about 10 or 12 minutes. Mr. Casper Leach is here. He is our joint host. I used to call him co-host, but now that Casper's here, he's the joint host. He's yeah, the, baby. The, the joint guy. But I'm the vapor guy, and uh, uh, we'll be back in just a minute. And oh, we got some clips uh, about our new initiative to legalize marijuana, of course. And, and uh, the, bank. Uh, the bank. We got a little clip with Willie Nelson. We'll be talking about the public bank stuff yeah. with uh, Casper here, too. And the Supreme Court ruling protecting uh, uh, a person's genetic heritage. And uh, uh, more. So stay tuned. We've got a great show for you tonight. But first, as always, we'll bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. I feel the force. Our first story tonight is out of Washington State. The Washington State Liquor Control Board, or WSLCB, has delayed releasing draft rules for the implementation of recreational marijuana legalization in the state. The Washington State Liquor Control Board Director Rick Garza blamed the delay on extensive last-minute public input on the rules. The WSLCB on Monday issued dates for filing its recreational marijuana draft rules. On June 19th, just next week, a board work session on the proposed rules will happen in Olympia. On July 3rd, the board will file an official draft of the rules, CR 102, with the state code reviser. On August 7th, a public hearing will happen up in Olympia on these draft rules. And on August 14th, the board will adopt rules. On September 14th, the effective date for rules go into effect to legalize the sale of marijuana to adults. And on September 14th, the Washington State Liquor Control Board begins accepting applications for all types of licenses to grow, process, and sell marijuana to adults over the age of 21. It's quite historic. June 10th was the deadline for collecting public input on the board's first cut of draft rules that were re released on May 16th. According to uh, uh, the Washington Liquor Control Board in a press release on Monday, they said, quote, while the initial written comments on the rules were re relatively light, the agency received extensive written comments over the weekend and throughout the day from public and private organizations. In keeping with our goal of an open and transparent process for drafting the rules, we're going to take an additional two weeks to consider the last minute input we've received. End quote, said, Washington State Liquor Control Board Director Rick Garza. The board's prepared to issue the rules on June 19th, Garza said. However, it's our responsibility to carefully review and consider the comments we received. The WSLCB is drafting the rules that, together with Colorado, will govern what is uh, it is calling the world's only comprehensive system of growing, processing, and retailing marijuana for recreational use." End quote. Next story is a little science story. The outlawing of natural substances such as cannabis, psilocybin, mushrooms, and other psychoactive amounts to a scandalous censorship of science and hampers research into potentially important medicinal uses, according to leading scientists on Wednesday. Drug laws and international treaties have set back key research in areas such as consciousness by decades, a scientist argued in the journal Nature Reviews Neuroscience, according to an article in Reuters. Uh, the, uh, David Nutt, former uh, head of the 
British government's uh, drug advisory and a professor of neuropsychopharmacology at Imperial College in London, said, quote, the decision to outlaw these drugs was based on their perceived dangers, but in many cases, the harms have been overstated, end quote. That said, the laws amount to the worst case of scientific censorship since the Catholic Church banned the works of Copernicus in Galileo in a statement accompanying the paper. Nutt said, quote, the laws have never been updated despite scientific advances and growing evidence that many of these drugs are relatively safe. Nutt went on, there appears to be no way for an international community to make such changes. This hindering of research and therapy is motivated by politics, not science. It's one of the most scandalous examples of scientific censorship in modern times. The ban on embryonic cell stem research by the Bush administration is the only possible contender, but that only affected the United States, not the whole world, Nutt said. Nutt, along with another former United Kingdom government advisor on drugs, Leslie David King, and co-author David Nichols of the University of North Carolina, called for the use of psychoactive drugs in research to be exempted from severe restrictions. Nutt went on to say, if we adopted a more rational approach to drug regulation, it would empower researchers to make advances in the study of consciousness and brain mechanisms of psychosis and could lead to major treatment innovations in areas such as depression and PTSD. David Nutt got sacked as the United Kingdom's top advisor on drugs in 2009 after publicly criticizing the British government for ignoring scientific evidence on cannabis and MDMA, or ecstasy. He's conducted small trials of psilocybin, the active ingredient in psychedelic mushrooms on human subjects. That study, using volunteers, indicated that psilocybin has the potential to alleviate severe forms of depression in people who hadn't responded to other treatments. But in April, Nutt said his plans to conduct the first full clinical trial to explore using psilocybin as a treatment had stopped because of strict rules on the use of illegal drugs in scientific research. The scientists call for reforms been endorsed by the British Neuroscience Association and the British Association for Psychopharmacology. Going to Washington, D.C., the long-delayed opening of medical marijuana dispensaries in our nation's capital, ironically, is inching closer. The District of Columbia's Department of Health released its medical marijuana application form on Wednesday. The registration fee for the medical marijuana program is $100 a year reports uh, CBS DC's uh, office. The patients uh, who lose their card will have to pay a $90 replacement fee. Reduced fees are available to certain low-income patients and caregivers. District of Columbia residents who have qualifying medical conditions such as HIV, cancer, and glaucoma can now apply for a medical marijuana card which they allows them to buy cannabis at one of three dispensaries in DC, according to reports from the Washington Post patients must first get a recommendation to use medical marijuana from a doctor. Some have already done that, while others are having a hard time finding a doctor willing to participate in the program. The program is accepting applications for participants younger than 18 if they have parental consent. Once patients have recommendations in Washington, D.C. and cards in hand, the dispensaries will be able to open for business. Now in Nevada, medical marijuana patients have been waiting 13 years for this. Here in Oregon, we've been waiting uh, 18 years. Governor Brian Sandoval of Nevada, though, on Wednesday signed a bill into law that will establish state-regulated systems of dispensaries to provide medical marijuana to licensed patients. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the Las Vegas Police Protective Association, and the Washoe County Sheriff's Office supported the measure. According to uh, Karen O'Keefe, the Director for State Policies for MPP, or the Marijuana Policy Project, she said, quote, we applaud Governor Sandoval and the Nevada legislature for their leadership and commend those in law enforcement organizations that expressed support for this much needed legislation. It will make Nevada a safer and healthier place, not only for medical marijuana patients, but for the entire community. This new law will provide patients with safe and reliable access to medical marijuana that they deserve. Regulating medical marijuana sales will also generate revenue and take the bite out of the state's underground marijuana market. Senate Bill 374 was introduced by Senators Tick Seeger-Bloom, a Democrat from Las Vegas, and Mark Hutchinson, a Republican from Las Vegas. 
and it establishes rules and regulations for medical marijuana dispensaries, infused product manufacturers, cultivation facilities, and testing facilities. In addition to standard sales tax, medical marijuana will be subject to an excise tax of 2% on wholesale sales and 2% on retail sales, of which 75% will be directed to education and 25% will be directed toward implementing and enforcing the regulations. The tax revenue created will first fund the regulation of the dispensaries, reports the Associated Press. Any additional revenue will go to education. Nevada voters approved a constitutional amendment, question 9, by a margin of 59% in 1998 and in, by 65% in 2000. It required the legislature to set up a medical marijuana program that includes appropriate methods of supplying medical marijuana to qualified patients. Currently, patients must grow their own marijuana or have it grown for them by a physician-approved caregiver, substantially responsible for caring for them. In 2012, Clark County District Judge Donald Mosley dismissed charges against two medical marijuana providers and called the state's current system absurd and ridiculous and unconstitutional. State-regulated medical marijuana dispensaries are currently operating in Arizona, Colorado, Maine, New Jersey, New Mexico, and Rhode Island. They're expected to begin operating this summer in Washington, D.C. and Vermont, and the rulemaking process for dispensaries is underway in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Here in Oregon, we have Senate Bill 3640, uh, and it looks, according to uh, Oregon House Ways and Means uh, Chair Peter Buckley, a Democrat from Ashland, we expect to see that bill pass both houses of legislature and go to Governor Kitzhaber's desk for his signature, and we're hopeful as Peter Buckley says that the uh, legislature, I mean the governor is likely to sign that as Governor Kitzhaber also signed the bill allowing patients with post-traumatic stress to apply for medical marijuana. <laughs> 18 states and the District of Columbia allow patients with qualifying conditions to use medical marijuana with recommendations from their physicians. The Illinois General Assembly adopted medical marijuana legislation in May that if signed by the governor, Governor Quinn, will establish a system of state-regulated dispensaries, and the New Hampshire legislature is likely to adopt similar legislation this month. Out of Iran, or Iran, the consumption of hemp seed nutritional oil in conjunction with the intake of evening primnoise oils and a restricted diet high in hot-natured foods such as peppers and low in saturated fats and sugars is associated with, quote, a significant improvement in symptom management and in immunological characteristics in subjects with multiple sclerosis. According to clinical trial data published in the current issue of the scientific journal BioImpacts, researchers at Tabriz University of Medical Sciences in Iran assessed the impact of hemp seed oil, evening primrose oil, and a restricted diet in 23 patients diagnosed with relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis. They reported that participants at the study's completion were either healthier in comparison to the baseline and that clinical and immunological parameters showed improvement in the patients after the intervention. The authors acknowledged that hemp seed oil possesses potent antioxidant properties and also likely acts on specific signaling pathways that regulate inflammatory responses, two characteristics that would presumably make it beneficial in the treatment of multiple sclerosis. The authors concluded, quote, after six months, significant improvements in extended disability status score were found. Our data demonstrated that co-supplemented hemp seed and evening primrose oil with hot natured diets such as peppers intervention may decrease the risk of developing multiple sclerosis." End quote. Previously published clinical trials assessing the impact of inhaled cannabis and extracted organic cannabinoids in patients with MS have demonstrated that plant cannabinoids such can alleviate disease symptoms such as involuntary spasticity, neuropathy, and bladder dysfunction, and in some subjects may actually moderate disease progression. Nonetheless, the National MS Society shares little enthusiasm for the therapeutic use of either cannabis or cannabis-derived products as a treatment option for multiple sclerosis patients, stating on its website, based on the studies to date, the fact that long-term use of marijuana may be associated with significant serious side effects it's the opinion of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society's Medical Advisory Board that there are currently insufficient data to recommend marijuana or its derivatives as a treatment for multiple sclerosis symptoms, end quote. The full text of this new study, Association of Expanded Disability Status Scale and 
cytokines after intervention with co-supplemented hemp seed, evening oils, and diet in multiple sclerosis patients appears in this month's edition of Bioimpacts. Last story tonight is out of Lansing, Michigan. The Michigan Supreme Court's determined that state authorized medical cannabis patients possess legal protections from criminal prosecution in cases involving the internal possession of THC while driving. In a unanimous opinion, the people of Michigan versus Kuhn, Michigan Supreme Court determined that patients who are, in, who are compliant with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, or MMMA, may not be criminally convicted of being under the influence absent evidence of behavioral impairment. Michigan traffic safety laws classify the operation of a motor vehicle with any amount of THC in one system to be a criminal offense regardless of whether or not they are impaired by the substance. According to this uh, ruling, the Michigan Supreme Court ruled, quote, Michigan Vehicle Code Zero Tolerance provision is inconsistent with the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act and does not apply to medical use of marijuana. If the defendant is shown to have been under the influence of marijuana, then the MMMA's protections will not apply and the prosecution may seek to convict a defendant of which he was in violation. The state zero tolerance per se drug law remains applicable to non-patients. Under these types of traffic safety laws, motorists are guilty of per se are in fact a criminal violation of safety laws if they are engaged in the act of driving while detectable levels of certain controlled substances or in some cases their inert metabolites or byproducts are present in the defendant's blood or urine. Proof of actual impairment is not required for a conviction under these laws. Ten states, Arizona, Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Rhode Island, Utah, and Wisconsin impose zero tolerance per se thresholds uh, for the presence of cannabinoids or their metabolites. State authorized medical cannabis patients in Arizona and Rhode Island are exempt from the statute and for prosecution under these per se statutes, they can provide evidence uh, unless there's evidence of psychomotor impairment. So that's the end of our hip news segment tonight. And we're gonna jump over and Mr. Justin James Bridges has a cool song for us. How you doing, Justin? Doing good, man. How y'all doing? Very well, very well. Gotta me. catch my breath. This song is called uh, Understand. child and man yeah but it's not until you see it with your own eyes that you can fully understand propaganda provides people with a daily reinforcement we'll of what's right or wrong and who to hate according to our government but luckily this beautiful universe is benevolent which seems to be the reason our government fights for relevance so look into yourself and if you feel me let me see that fish up out with the people cause the people are where it's sent in revolutionary times, you might as well just shoot your TV set, kick off your shoes, and find some place where you can let your soul connect. Cause you know they won't beat you, they'll keep you down however they can. With a smile on their face, they'll tell their lies to every woman, child, and man. Yeah, but it's not until you see it with your own eyes. That you can fully understand See the media is an industry so powerful That you'll believe with prisons overflowing That we're living in the land of the free So take a closer look and if we're lucky Then you'll start to see it's not about your safety Just about the bottom line and green The truth I speak is something that they hope no one will ever see But I promise you no silence to this final breath Escapes of me so please can we just wake up? The time has come for us to say enough is enough. So come on all together and let's all join as one and let's show them all the power of unconditional love. Cause you know they won't beat you. They'll keep you down however they can. With a 
smile on their face, they'll tell their lies to every woman, child, and man. Yeah, but it's not until you see it with your own eyes that you can fully understand. Kicks, chains of getting women. It's the knowledge that leads the truth of all. of freedoms, and its riches. And if you're ready, now's the time to rise up against the system. But if you're not, maybe you should look at this life you're living. Cause you know they won't beat you. They'll keep you down however they can. With a smile on their face, they'll tell their lies to every woman, child, and man. But it's not until you see it with your own eyes That you can fully understand All right. Thank Justin you very James much Bridges. Thank you, sir Check me out at justinjamesbridges.com Justinjamesbridges.com I think that was a great song Really Thank good message much. in there Appreciate That was cool it. So we'll have you back at the end of the show Thank you very much Another groovy song How you doing, Casper? Mellow, how you doing? Very well, very well Very well a little warm in the studio under these lights, but hey, so it goes. Uh, we have a caller, a quick caller. If you have a question or comment for us tonight, you can call us that number on your screen there. It's 503-288-4442, and we have someone who quickly called in. Welcome to the show, caller. Uh, thank you, Paul. I was calling to um, ask if, if uh, the THC Foundation has uh, a program that helps cancer patients that um, don't have access to good medicine. My husband has two different cancers and is going through chemo. Uh, we're on disability, and uh, his grower decided at the last minute last year he was not going to grow, and the present grower can't grow outside, and my husband is just losing weight. Um, he needs some quality medicine. Do you know of? Any, um, I can help you. Just give help. us a call at the number on your screen. Well, no, no, there's another number that's about to pop up there. It's 503 235 4606. Call us at 503 235 4606. I'll be happy to help. Uh, thank you. And any thank other so patients much. that are, are dealing with chemotherapy for their cancer and don't have medicine, then we can try to help. Just call us at 503 two three five four six zero six and something that uh, we're happy to be able to do with uh, some of the excess we uh, grow a few number of plants for our patients but we grow big plants and we give it all away for free so we'll be happy to help you thank you so much you're welcome if you have a question or comment for us tonight you can call us at 503-288-4442 that's 503-288-4442 i know casper you were in indiana for a number of years and uh, doing your radio show and you come out here, how long has it been now? Almost a couple of years? three years now. Yeah, and so you're now you're a medical marijuana patient. I'm able to give you free cannabis and uh, it helps, doesn't it? I like that expression. Yeah. Free cannabis. Yeah. We want free <laughs> cannabis from unfair laws. And so we have filed several initiatives that we're preparing to circulate. One of them is a constitutional amendment that will allow people to uh, grow and possess their own cannabis, allow the state to regulate the sale of that, 
And so we've launched that new initiative and we've got another initiative, a revised version of Measure 80 that will uh, uh, be very similar to Measure 80, but we've uh, revised it to make a lot of our critics uh, happy. criticisms last campaign and make them happy and make it more likely to pass. I've also personally filed three other non-marijuana initiatives. One that will say uh, for natural individual rights, it's uh, by the Individual Rights Initiative Sponsors, or IRIS, nifty acronym, the Individual Rights Initiative Sponsors. It says that people, our natural individuals, have more rights than artificial individuals such as corporations, the government, and in the future, artificial intelligence and robots. So I'm sure all of us would like to have more rights than uh, the government and corporations and robots. And so this is, I think this initiative will do quite well. We have another one that was just impacted by the United States Supreme Court ruling yesterday that says each individual owns their own DNA. You may have heard that many corporations have tried to uh, patent our DNA. Many people, the Supreme Court yesterday threw that out. But our, our initiative goes farther it says that each person owns their own DNA and subject to personal privacy rights, all DNA is not subject to patent and it's open source code, just like open source software, where it can be marketed and sold, but you have to release the code and, and all the information about how you produced it. So this is the, I call it the uh, uh, Genome Protection Act and uh, the political committee uh, that is sponsoring is the Genetic Freedom Workers Union. And then last but not least, I filed another initiative to establish a state bank so that all state and local government money goes into a publicly owned bank with public records and all that money will be used to uh, fund sustainable economic development and for the benefit of all Oregonians. So instead of having our bank deposits go to fund uh, tar sands development in Outer Mongolia, uh, or other projects outside the scope of our benefit, these funds will go to benefit the state of Oregon. North Dakota has a state bank, and it's been very beneficial for the state of North Dakota. They have 2.5% uh, unemployment and didn't experience any downturn with the banking crisis nor the, uh, uh, the previous uh, economic implosion when the housing bubble burst. So. Uh, this is a very beneficial bill, so I'm sponsoring all three, but there are two marijuana initiatives out there, and uh, uh, we're moving forward with those. In fact, we did a radio show, Casper and I, with a, uh, an author named Ellen Brown, who's coming out with a new book called The Public Banking Solution, and you can find out more about that book at publicbankingsolution.com. Ellen's amazing. Very yeah. bright mind. Brought she a lot to the table. lawyer. She's got a number of books out there, two of them on banking. The other one's called Web of Debt. Mm -hmm. And also another website she has, webofdebt.com. Really exciting week, Paul. We got, like you said, uh, Washington, D.C. is about ready to launch their medical marijuana dispensaries. And yet we had 103 dispensaries raided in Southern California just this past week. And uh, supposedly we got this thing called a, uh, what is it, sequester or sequester? Sequester. Sequester, that's what it is. I can never get it out. They got so many different euphemisms. But we're just too broke to be paying our bills and, and covering the uh, expense of, of salaries for government employees and, and libraries and after school curriculums and laying off teachers. But by golly, we got enough money to amp up the war on drugs and arrest little Johnny and little Jimmy because they embraced the plant. And it's even more heart-wrenching to know that a lot of the money that's being pissed away on civ civilians in this country is to arrest medical marijuana patients in states where medical marijuana is allowed. Paul, I can't tell it's you. It's outrageous. You know, there's a lady down in Southern Oregon who's been helping many patients with Southern Oregon Normal. Her name is Lori Duckworth and her husband, Lee. They were recently arrested and held on over a half million dollars bail each for over a week before the judge reduced the bail. But in uh, the county where they were arrested, Jackson County, they will not return calls if you say someone is here at my house and they're going to rape me. Right. And there's one lady who was attacked and when she called the local police, the police said uh, she should move to another county if she wants police protection. But these very same police in Jackson County, with the help of federal funds, went in and spent 
millions of public dollars of public money to go after someone providing medical marijuana to patients. It's just a travesty. As the representative from down in that area, Peter Buckley, a Democrat from Ashland, the chair of the Oregon House Ways and Means Committee said, and a past sponsor, endorser of Measure 80, he said that, uh, you know, it's a, a terrible waste. And he's got a bill to solve that, to allow and regulate dispensaries and put Oregon on the cutting edge of that. So I urge you, if you're in Oregon, to contact your state representative and have them endorse the medical dispensary bill pushed by Representative Peter Buckley. It's House Bill 3640. And uh, we'll use all the help we get. It's frustrating, too, the number of... Uh companies and industries and people that love the drug war and just want to see it continue when they need to realize that like eric holder and company need to realize they're obsolete the feds yeah we can no longer afford them running around and chasing people for a plant if they're going to be paid to go do something we have a lot of real crime and we have a lot of uh, real criminals that are you know like taking away our freedoms i can think of one person that might be arrested for contempt of court and violating the constitutional rights and and all of our all of our rights here in America. Uh, what's his name? Um, Holder. Holder. Eric Holder. Yes. U.S. Attorney yeah. General. Yeah. And I guy, thought you guys were bros. We we were until he started listening in on my phone conversation and he got a little pissy that I was uh, talking bad about him behind his back. Oh, uh, just God. tell him the truth. Well, you know. You're an ass clown. And then right. we got the guy in charge of the NSA. Yeah, you know, won't give me back a copy of my of my computer. You know, backup files. You're jerks. But you know, the people at the IRS, we love you, right? Because you're gonna come <laughs> after us otherwise and shut us down. And then you can't. I'm in a constant state of audit for ten God, years, but that's okay. And then if you got I still love you. If if you've got a company and you want to do banking, you can't bank at Bank of America. You can't bank. Not at if you want Wells to help Fargo. people with medical so, marijuana. It's I'm true. a little you frustrated. Know what? They want to we say have we want to end the war on drugs, but they won't end it. But we will, and you will, because we can't do it alone. We need your help. I need so to go join. to our website at hemp.org, or to find out more about the uh, initiatives, go to cannabistaxact.org and uh, find out a little more. We've also, for our constitutional amendment, started a new organization, Help in Marijuana Prohibition in Oregon. It's Hemp in Oregon. Help in Marijuana Prohibition in Oregon. I used to work for Help in Marijuana I know. We, we've we've uh, ripped off the late, great Jack Hare, who's been a mentor for both of us in, over the decades past. And uh, we'll talk more about that in weeks to come. But you know what? We have a little video we're going to run here about our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Prohibition of any kind does not stop illicit behavior. It drives it underground. I really think that the majority of Republicans are classical liberals. I'm a classical liberal. Less government, best government. Abraham Lincoln said that. The laws uh, against marijuana are causing more trouble and harm to our society than drug abuse itself. I saw the utter failure after 20 years of police work of this policy in our society. We just need to end the war on drugs as being totally ineffective and devastating and more of a problem than the drug problem itself. Not once do I remember responding to a call of domestic violence and that person being under the influence of marijuana. We need to measure the effectiveness of our nation's drug policy by harm reduction, not by how many people do we lock up. It's never going to be legal to smoke pot, become impaired, get behind the wheel of a car. It's never going to be legal to smoke pot, become impaired, do harm to others. We need to stop arresting 1.8 million people a year in this country on drug-related crime. We now have 2.3 million people behind bars, highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. We're spending too much money. My friends in Europe tell me a society has to make a choice, tolerate alternative lifestyles or build more prisons. And then they always follow up by saying, and you Americans have more people in prison than anybody else on the planet. It's not drug abuse that is causing this devastation. It is prohibition. Cannabis should not be illegal. Cannabis has been here for centuries, uh, doing no harm and oftentimes good, often being used as a medicine throughout the centuries. But we have decided to, to make a war on drugs basically because by making a war on drugs, politicians can collect votes. Since 1999, I have advocated legalizing marijuana. Control it, regulate it, tax it, make it like alcohol in any category, 
marijuana is safer than alcohol. And either we are inherently evil people that should be locked up or there's something wrong with our legal system and we've got to take the crime out of the equation when it comes to drug policy. In our lifetimes, Russia is not going to recover from its monetary collapse. That's what's facing the United States. The good news is, is that we can fix this. All right. Well, we want to thank the folks at Cannabis Planet for putting that video together in support of the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act and Measure 80 during That's the last right. campaign. They put that together in October. My dad's last always year. told me I'm from Cannabis Planet. Ah, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, we have a little bit of show and tell we're going to go through right now. We're going to start down here with a couple of products from Sharp and Dome. This one is cannabis. On the front, it says cannabis sativa. On the top up here, it says cannabis indica and cannabis, Indian cannabis and cannabis Americana. That's good for those uh, HD big screen TVs. Sharp and Dome out of Baltimore on the bottom. It says the properties it's for uh, nerve problems, nervine, an antispasmodic, a sedative, anti-deliriant, and it's an aphrodisiac. You're supposed to take a teaspoon of this and put it in a cup of wine, and voila, your cup of wine becomes medicine. Amazing. And if you have an erection for more than four hours, do you call your doctor? Um, we aren't going to go there, Casper. Oh, We're okay. not going to go there. This next one is also from Sharp and Dome, and it is a sedative. You can see there's a few little remnants of pills in there. It says they're soluble gelatin-coated pills with extract of cannabis indica, extract of sumbul, valerian, and uh, hypocyamus. There it is, Sharp and Dome, extract of cannabis indica. Right next door, we have this from W.H. Uh, Shifflin and Company. A two gram pill of cannabis. And there are a few little, can you see them in there? See a little coated, they're uh, 100 soluble two gram cannabis pills. What's this supposed to do for you? Um, they help with all those things we talked about earlier. Uh, pain, spasm, seizures, glaucoma, uh, cancer. Now this one's from Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly is still in existence. And this is a one gram uh, sugar coated cannabis pill. There they are, it's got the real things in there. One gram sugar-coated cannabis pills by from Eli Lilly, circa 1912. And circa 1915, also containing some com comments, is a cam cannabin compound with uh, extract of cannabis. It has strychnine sulfate as well. I don't know, I don't think I would take the strychnine What's myself. What's up with the strychnine? And an, uh, zinc phosphate. From Eli Lilly, circa 1915. You should check that out because there's strychnine there's in strychnine a, lot of, in these a lot of these things. I know they thought it was medicinal. Then we want to talk about this company here, Healthy Eating Made Possible. They're out there selling uh, hemp seeds, uh, USDA, organic hemp seeds from Canada. And I will be happy to demonstrate eating just a package of these right now here on TV. I'm going to do it. Now we had a story at the beginning of the show about hemp seed oil helping multiple sclerosis patients. So we're very happy to uh, realize that this, this is distributed by Johnny Hemp Seed LLC from right here in River City, uh, Portland, Oregon. Here we go, hemp seed. Now, while you're eating those, I found out by reading mm. on the news today Good that hemp seed. And Good hemp seed. In, the state of Wash in the state of Washington, when now when you're selling any edibles or any recreational marijuana, you are not allowed to say that there's medicinal value to the utilization of eating the nummies or smoking the funds. They just, I guess if you're selling it for medicinal purposes only, then you can say it's good for glaucoma. But if you're selling the very same thing for recreational use and it's being taken this very same way, all you can say is it's a good buzz. All right. Well, you know what? I am proud to help this following gentleman obtain his medical marijuana permits in Oregon, Hawaii, California, and Washington, and also for his wife and oldest daughter and guitarist and harmonica player and drummer and roadies. I help them get these permits that have saved them from several problems. So here's a good friend of mine I've known for about 23 years.
Hi, I'm Willie Nelson, and I urge you to support the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act to regulate marijuana and restore industrial hemp. This initiative will end adult marijuana prohibition and let our criminal justice officers focus limited resources on real criminals and not on marijuana users like me. OCTA will also allow farmers to grow hemp for fuel, fiber, and food to create jobs and help our economy. Please support OCTA. Thank you. Thank you, Willie. We appreciate your support. He's going to be touring the area. I think he's out at Mary Hill Winery coming up here in August. So get your tickets. It's a beautiful location just past the, the desert uh, divide on the uh, uh, desert edge of the Columbia River, right above the ancient Native American town of Celilo. Uh, but it, that's been buried under the, the lake created by the Dalles Dam. So we hope to see you out there at Willie's show and maybe expect to hear him announce a few more here in the coming weeks. In fact, his son is going to back up uh, this other, these other folks. His son is one of his sons, uh, Lucas Nelson, and The Promise of the Real will be playing here in Portland at the Crystal Ballroom in the coming week. I recommend you see it. He's uh, a lot like a cross between Neil Young and Jimi Hendrix on the guitar. He plays with his teeth and he uh, sometimes, not all the time. And he does, the, he's a young guy in his early 20s. He can do these three, four foot high scissor kicks as he's playing his guitar. It's pretty cool to watch. Hurts my knees to think about it. But, uh, you know, uh, maybe back when I was in my early 20s, I might. I, I couldn't have done that then either. Anyway, we are taking your phone calls and questions. If you have a comment or question for us tonight, you can call us and talk about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients. Call us at that number that just popped up on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We do uh, uh, have a studio audience, so if you folks ever want to come down and watch our show, come on down to 2766 Northeast MLK, our Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, here in River City, Portland, Oregon. Any Friday night, except the one around the 4th on the 5th of July, and because uh, we won't be here on the 5th of July. But we'll be showing a, a nice tape show for you instead. Being and after the show, we smoke everybody out, right? Usually. Yeah, oh, it's great. Come on, bring munchies. You'll love it. We're going to have to get a bigger place. Though. Yeah, I It was think just so. way too crowded last yeah, week. Really? Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about your, your radio show. Well, it has been an exciting uh, couple of weeks, and uh, we're putting together, I think it's going to happen, a special every Friday in August. We're going to be focusing on uh, the global marijuana movement, and I believe we're going to be doing two-hour specials every Friday in August. Right. Is what we're now trying to do. Is Michael Kravitz going to be helping on? He'll that? be doing that, and we're going to be doing uh, one week on in, uh, international policies on industrial hemp and medical marijuana. Then we're going to be talking about uh, implementing solutions as well on a global level, and. I'm really getting tired of that people having their blinders on when they're talking about industrial hemp and medical marijuana as it pertaining to just their country or in their state. And so we're going to put together five conferences, basically, and we're going to pull together the most uh, brilliant minds of each topic from around the world. So we'll be having people from Israel, uh, China, Japan, Germany, Australia, uh, the Netherlands, uh, South Africa, uh, from all around the world coming on talking about the importance of ending prohibition, utilizing this plant for the industry uh, purposes that this plant can provide Where can for. they s listen to your show? AmericaFreedomRadio.com, AM, FM stations all across America and on the Roku network. Please make it a point to tune in Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Well, Eastern no, Standard that's Eastern Time. time. And Pacific then 10 time to 11 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Yeah, well, it's time. always 4.20 on the show, so it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. It's all a state of mind. Yeah, exactly. It's Casper, exactly. all a state of mind. So uh, we have another film clip we're going to run. This is our friend uh, Jorge Cervantes. But you know what? I just, through the magic of telecommunication, been texted a question from our website. The question is, with the new Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, how many plants can be grown without a permit? And will hemp be part of the initiative? Under the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, you will, without a permit, be able to possess 
and grow 24 plants in 24 ounces without a permit. And you know, uh, there's a law against selling it. So uh, there's no real law against having more than 24 plants or 24 ounces under the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, but there is a law against selling it. And then uh, will hemp be part of the new initiative? Yes, it says that hemp will be legal and unregulated and the cultivation of hemp for fuel, fiber, and food will be without regulation nor license. So we'll be supporting industrial hemp. Also, 2% of the proceeds from the sale of marijuana uh, to adults over the age of 21 will go to uh, help reestablish hemp fuel and hemp fiber industries and hemp food industries here in the state of Oregon. So uh, we'll see a little bit of the money from the adult social use of cannabis be used to uh, restore hemp to its rightful place in our economy. So we're gonna run this little film clip now. It's Jorge Cervantes talking about your cannabis cultivation indoors. And I believe he's gonna talk about air circulation this evening, so enjoy. Fresh air is essential in all gardens. Outdoor air is abundant and packed with carbon dioxide necessary for plant life. Indoor gardens must be meticulously controlled to replicate the outdoor atmosphere. Air should be able to be evacuated from the room, the entire room, in less than five minutes. That means we've got to have an entry for the air and an exit for the air. Vent fans are rated in the amount of air measured in cubic feet per minute. They are able to move. Okay, let's understand why we need to evacuate so much air and keep the air flowing through a room. A 10-foot square garden will use from 10 to 50 gallons or more of water every week. Plants transpire most of this water into the air, and if it is left in the grow room, humidity eventually increases to 100%, which causes growth to screech to a halt. It also opens the door for pest and disease attacks. Even if your grow room is in a small closet, you're going to need a vent fan. Right here we've got several different kinds of fans. We've got the propeller fan, which is the inline fan. I like these real well. They're not the most expensive fan, but they work and they work well. Next is the inline fan. What they have is an impeller inside, and this moves air through a duct at a high speed. These things are quiet, well balanced, and I love them. Next is a blower. This is called a squirrel cage blower because it looks like a squirrel cage and it blows out one end. They do move a heck of a lot of air quickly. These are little muffin fans or computer fans, I call them. Uh, they move quite a bit of air. They're small. They don't make a lot of noise, but you definitely can't get by with just one. And all of these are vent fans. They move the air from inside the room to outside the room. To install, run the duct the shortest possible distance and keep curves to a minimum. Well, this six inch ducting comes about six feet through this plastic PVC wall, turns the corner and goes right into this hole here in the chimney. First it's cleaned with a charcoal filter, then it's vented out this chimney. One of the problems you run into in an indoor grow room is smell. A good exhaust fan vented outdoors is the easiest way to keep the house from reeking of fresh marijuana. A deodorizing liquid, ozone generator, activated charcoal filter, or a combination of these will solve fragrance problems. This one, this particular one, fits in a 12 inch duct. You just put this in your ducting, it treats the air, takes out all the smell before it's expelled. And these charcoal filters are great. Around the outside is carbon. And on top of the carbon is a dust filter. The carbon actually absorbs the fragrance of cannabis. Some grow rooms have sufficient air coming in via cracks and holes, but the majority require air to be ushered in with the help of an intake fan. Over here, this is what I've been waiting to see. This hole right here is a hole that comes in and it's for new air. This is a key place for a thermometer and a barometer. If the air comes into the room too cold, say lower than 60 degrees, you're going to have problems. It's going to make your plants feel bad. <laughs> we don't want them to feel bad now, do we? Other key places for thermometers and barometers are at the level of the plants and higher in the room. So easily it could be 10 degrees cooler at the floor 
than it is at the ceiling. This 10 degrees will cost you ounces of bud. The ideal temperature range for indoor growth is 72 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. The ideal thermometer is a day-night or maximum minimum type that measures how low the temperature dips at night or how high it reaches during the day. At night, the temperature can drop 5 to 10 degrees with little noticeable effect on growth rate. The temperature should not drop more than 15 degrees Fahrenheit or excessive humidity and mold might become problems. Look at the, the tips, the fringe of this plant here. They're transpiring to keep cool. If they're having trouble staying cool, you're going to see this outward edge of the, the plant turning up like this. If the temperature lowered just a little bit, then this would go away. And it also means you're going to need to water this garden every day just to keep it cool. Relative humidity is the ratio between the amount of moisture in the air and the greatest amount of moisture the air could hold at the same temperature. The higher the temperature, the more moisture the air can hold. The lower the temperature, the less moisture the air can hold. When the temperature drops, the humidity rises. It's that simple. Measure relative humidity with a hygrometer, an extremely important instrument that will save you and your garden much frustration and fungi. What we've got is 52% humidity in this grow room right now, which is an excellent humidity level for this to stay. Ideally, we'd like to have approximately 50% humidity during flowering and approximately 60 to 65% during vegetative growth. Humidity can be increased with a humidifier by spraying water into the air or by letting a bucket of water evaporate in the room and can be decreased with a dehumidifier. Circulating the air within the room is incredibly important. The leaf can use all of the carbon dioxide in the zone right around it and CO2 works for plants just like oxygen works for people. Well what that means is the more CO2 you give a plant the faster they'll grow. They can use five times more CO2 than naturally occurs in the air. It's very funny but this little area here can have all kinds of carbon dioxide around it and then within a short time all of that carbon dioxide is used and if it's not fluttering, moving, no new air comes in to replace that carbon dioxide. What we have here is a wall mounted oscillating fan. It looks like about an 18 inch fan and what it does is it oscillates or turns back and forth and supplies circulation air around the room and notice it's just above the canopy of the plants. You need a minimum of one fan like this for every 100 square feet or 10 by 10 room, but preferably you could use two or three. Now if we take a look at this clone here, just, just last week the grower came in and stripped all the lower leaves off of it. The smaller buds down here really weren't getting very much light because the canopy is so dense. So it really didn't produce very much dope down here. The ventilation uh, moves up through the plants like this and aerates everything from the top and the side so it really lowers the probability of a fungal disease and it also makes life pretty tough for spider mites which are one of the biggest pests in the garden. And then the third thing is you can look under the garden and see exactly what's going on so you can tell if there's any problems down here. Always make sure to have plastic blades on your fan because when you put your finger in them, it won't hurt as much. Also, I like to have a shroud around this that protects you because when you back into the damn thing, it's spooky and it just might hurt you as well. It's a lot of fun to play with, but other than that, here in this high-tech grow room, what the growers decided to do is introduce carbon dioxide. But what this grower has is carbon dioxide that's built in a pressurized tank, just like a welding tank, and it comes through and it's dispersed out this tube here. He's taken the, the fans and put them over here at this level to blow the CO2 back this way, and another fan down low to blow it back up. What I've got here is an incredibly efficient inline fan with a 12 inch duct on it. This is the intake and this is the exhaust out this way. This I'm going to exhaust straight out the back of the room. What I'll do is I'll take this fan, put it right here in this hole where it's secure, 
There. Now that'll kind of hold it in place. I'll slide. So we'll have more of Jorge Cervantes, another resident of River City, Potland, Oregon, uh, back with more information on cultivating and taking care of your garden at home. I love Jorge. He's a good guy. Very nice guy. I must say, though, when I watch those films, it just reminds me of how much work and equipment you have to uh, invest in in order to have an excellent crop. So all those people who are actually providing uh, medical marijuana for patients and who are acting as caregivers really are putting out an awful lot of effort, energy, time, and money. a lot of work to have good, healthy plants, indoors or out. So uh, it takes a lot of diligence, a lot of observation, a lot of knowledge of science and horticulture and pests and diseases. And Speaking of pests, write your congressman, write your senators, let them know that we need to end prohibition now. We are out of time, so I want to... Uh, let you know that Mr. Justin James Bridges is standing by in the wings with another fantastic song uh, about uh, freedom and justice. And uh, you can go see his website at justinjamesbridges.com. And uh, we will be back next. Oh, you can find out more about us. For instance, if you need help locating a doctor to help you get your medical marijuana permit, we have doctors all across the country that are happy to help you. Just call us at one 800 Seven two three zero one eight eight. That's one eight hundred seven two three zero one eight eight. If you want to get involved in ending adult marijuana prohibition, circulating any of our initiatives, want to come down and sign the initiative, please do come to our office at one hundred five Southeast Eighteenth or our petition office at twenty seven twelve Northeast Sandy Boulevard, or just look at our website at hemp dot org, or give us a call at five zero three two three five four six zero six. That's here in Potland, Oregon, 503-235-4606. And if you want to just smoke out, contact me at Casper at timeforhemp.com. <laughs> and Go we'll to be back next week. And help us restore hemp. Justin James Bridges, take it away. Right. <clears throat> Pain, it's not the answer. Oh, but sometimes it'll make you question what's right. Life. Wake up in the morning, almost every day's the same Eyes overcome with familiarity of pain And I start to contemplate different thoughts to get away But with our so and then some dabs, my feelings start to change See this pain I feel today is something that you wouldn't expect For those who made me feel this way Took the oldest serpent protect me with western doctors, pharmaceuticals